So welcome to the session. Next we shall discuss about Stokes law and how we are going to represent that one we shall see and what is the meaning of terminal velocity and Reynolds number. So how we are using the Reynolds number we shall see. So as we know Stokes law mathematically it is given with the formula F is equal to 6 pi theta R into P where in this formula where F is the viscous force acting on the sphere of the body and 6 is the constant value and pi is constant and theta is nothing but coefficient of viscosity of the liquid and R is the radius of the body and V is the terminal velocity of the body. So Stokes law is given by 6 pi theta R into V or Stokes law it can be represented in another form or we can going to represent by using another formula that is F is equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube in the bracket rho minus of sigma into g. So how this formula comes we already discussed. Uh, so in one of the derivations, so where F is the viscous force and pi is constant and r rho is the density of the material of the sphere and r is the that is radius of the spherical body. So here you can use this formula or you can use this formula in order to represent the Stokes law. So same thing, so this is Stokes law, keep one more point in your mind that is Stokes law is applicable for the spherical body only. So you have to remember that one and next we shall see the what is the basic definition of terminal velocity. So terminal velocity, so here we know so it is the constant velocity so that is acquired by the body when it is freely falling in the viscous medium. So this we are going to call terminal velocity. So terminal velocity is nothing but that is one of the constant velocity. So that is acquired by the body when it is freely falls in the viscous medium. So that is the basic definition of so that is terminal velocity. So next we shall see what is the meaning of Reynolds number. So how we are going to represent mathematically and what is the meaning of those terminology involved in the mathematical formula and for what purpose it is used. So we shall discuss about that. So we know Reynolds number. So Reynolds number is that thing, nothing but that is a pure number. So why we are using that Reynolds number means so in order to classify the nature of the flow of liquid, so Reynolds number concept plays an important role. So here Reynolds number, so that is, so according to definition, how we are going to uh, define that one? We know that is one of the constant value, or that is the number. So by using that number, we are possible to classify the type of flow of liquid. So here it is a number which determines the type of flow of liquid through the pipe it is called Reynolds number and mathematically it is represented by the formula. So Reynolds number is represented by NR is equal to V rho D into theta in this formula where V is the that is speed of the liquid through the pipe and rho is the density of the liquid. And this D is the, that is diameter of the pipe and this neta represents the coefficient of viscosity. And this is the mathematical formula used to represent the Reynolds number. So for what purpose we are using the Reynolds number? So Reynolds number based on Reynolds number that is one of the pure number by using that number that we are using to classify the type of flow of liquid based on that value. So here that is used in the classification of nature of flow on the basis of Reynolds number. So if N0 is the Reynolds number that is less than 1000 value means so the motion of type of fluid so that is na, we are calling that one as streamlined flow. If Reynolds number is greater than 2000 means we are calling the type of flow of liquid is turbulent flow. So if it is lies between 1000 and 2000 then the type of flow of it uh, we are not calling streamline or we are not calling turbulent. So if we are that we are going to call steady flow of liquid. So if 
Reynolds number it lies between thousand and two thousand means. So the type of law of Euclid are calling that one as unsteady. So Reynolds number is one of the pivot number. So by using that value. so we are possible to classify the type of flow of liquid which type of flow of liquid it is so if it is less than 1000 that means the type of flow of liquid is streamline flow if it is greater than 2000 means it is a turbulent motion we are calling if it lies between 1000 and 2000 then the type of flow of liquid we are going to call steady motion so this is all about stokes law and how we are going to represent mathematically and what are the meaning of the terminologies involved in those mathematical formula and here stokes law is applicable only for spherical bodies you have to remember that one and we saw the basic definition of terminal velocity and reynolds number concept so based on reynolds number type of flow of liquid is possible to identify